Today we are talking about the pelvic floor. Now, interestingly, um, a lot of women don't think about um, exercising their pelvic floor muscles until they get to a point where they realize that those pelvic floor muscles aren't perhaps doing the job that they're supposed to. So we become more aware of it, I think, after perhaps we've had children and then we might have some um, some um, uh, physiotherapy after after the birth and they can, can encourage you to do your pelvic floor exercises to keep that pelvic floor nice and strong. However, not everybody is lucky enough to have that physio. I know I didn't when I had my daughter. I did after my son, but for some reason, it's not always available for everyone. Um, it depends, I think, um, where you had your children. Um, the, I know I had mine, mine at two different hospitals, and it was completely different. Um, and I, but I think we're, we're generally things are getting a bit better now, and there are more um, physiotherapists who uh, specialise in pelvic health, so they're able to support you after you've had children. However, for a lot of women, they didn't have any of that, so they start to realise that there are um, problems or little issues going on with that pelvic floor as they've got a little bit older. Once you hit that menopause age um, and you're going through perimenopause and maybe just after, after menopause, you start to notice that maybe you've lost that strength and support uh, from your pelvic floor. It's not, as, it's not doing its job, not like it used to when you were younger. So what is the pelvic floor? Well, you can think of pelvic floor as like a hammock and it's there to support all the internal organs. It sort of um, attaches sort of at the front from the pubic bone and it attaches again at the back of the pelvis where the tailbone is. And it's there to support your bladder, your bowels and all your other internal organs. So you can imagine um, it, it's got quite a big job to do to keep everything nicely supported in its proper place where it should be. So what we want to try and avoid um, is a type of, doing type of activities that can put um, downward pressure on that pelvic floor. So especially if you, uh, if you start to realise that you are, are having little issues, uh, continence issues, so maybe um, you find that you're leaking a little bit if you um, laugh, sneeze or cough, um, it's at that point when you want to make sure that um, uh, you're careful on the type of exercises or just everyday things that, um, that maybe make, uh, make the problem slightly worse. So if you're a keen gardener and you're out lifting heavy pots, um, um, things like that, sometimes uh, we need a bit of extra support um, for our pelvic floor. Um, just um, maybe um, if you've just done your shopping, you're lifting heavy bags out of your shopping trolley and putting them in the boot of the car. Things, those types of activities where anything where you're sort of bending, you're lifting anything with a bit of weight, you need to make sure that your pelvic floor is strong enough to support all those internal organs. Okay. Now, Pilates is great to help us with this because one of the things that Pilates teaches us is to um, engage the core abdominal muscles. And what that does, if we learn how to engage these abdominals correctly, it can help to take a bit of that downward pressure away from the pelvic floor. Okay? Plus, Pilates is great to encourage us to engage pelvic floor as well. So the two combined will give you an awful lot of support. So we can do this in different, uh, lots, lots of different ways. So you can um, just focus on exercising the pelvic floor muscles um, on their own. You can exercise your pelvic floor muscles with some movement, which I feel is always a good idea because it's usually when we're moving that we need the pelvic floor to do its job. So you will know that you are starting to have issues with your pelvic floor if, like I've said, you find that you leak a little bit if you laugh cough or sneeze. If you suddenly have to jog uh, and run a short distance and then you realise, oh, should, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Or if you find that there's some urgency um, and you feel like you need to rush to the loo, all of a sudden you feel like you can't hold it and you need to go urgently. All of those are signs that um, your pelvic floor needs a little bit of help. Now, during 
um, menopause, when you hit uh, perimenopause, your estrogen levels are starting to drop. So regardless of whether you've had children or not, um, with that um, drop in estrogen levels, your pelvic floor muscles will naturally lose some of its strength. So the support that you're giving those internal organs as well, you'll lose some of that, that support. So it is really important um, for all women, regardless of your age. So you might just be in your late 30s experiencing those menopause symptoms. You may be in your late 60s, early 70s, and you're thinking, well, yeah, I should perhaps be doing something, but surely it's just a bit too late for me. It's not. It is never too late to work those those uh, those pelvic floor muscles. It is just a muscle at the end of the day, and we can just we can work it, we can strengthen it, and it will help us to give us that support back to those internal organs. So, like I said before, there are lots of different ways that you can you can use visualizations, you can use different exercises. I like to do it. it um, offer different varieties, different ways of thinking about engaging in pelvic floor because I could describe it in one way to somebody but it doesn't it doesn't click with them. They just don't quite get it. But then if I explain in a different way with perhaps a different visualization, all of a sudden they think, oh right, oh that makes it so much easier. I get it now. So today I thought we've got to do a little bit of pelvic floor work. So that's what we're going to do next. I'm going to show you a super simple way to get started working that, those pelvic floor muscles. So let's get started. So the great thing about doing pelvic floor work is that you can do it anywhere at any time because nobody knows you're doing it. Okay. So uh, you can do it in different positions as well. Now today I'm doing it in high kneeling. I find this is a quite comfortable position. I'm, I'm comfortable on my knees, um, and I can I could do my pelvic floor um, muscles uh, work those muscles while I'm doing something else. Okay, so if I'm teaching a Pilates class and I might be doing something with my arms, I can also engage those pelvic floor muscles and give them a little workout at the same time. Okay. But you don't have to do it in high kneeling. You can do it in standing. You can do it in sitting. You can do it lying down. And you can do it at any time of the day to fit in around you. You don't have to get your mat out to do these exercises. Okay. So, for instance, if you're um, standing waiting for the kettle to boil, you're making a cup of tea, you can do your pelvic floor exercises then. If you're sitting down at the end of the day and you're watching the TV, do your pelvic floor muscles uh, exercises. And if you um, decide that you want to do them as soon as you wake up in the morning, you could do them lying in bed before you even get up. No one will know that you're doing them. Okay. So let's say I'm in this position today. I find this position is quite, quite comfortable. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you um, just one way um, to um, activate those core um, now, the pelvic floor muscles, I was getting mixed up in my core muscles then, We're working on those pelvic floor muscles, just one simple way. There are different techniques that you can use because you want to be able to um, get your pelvic floor muscles to work depending on the type of situation that you are in. For instance, you might find that you need to uh, suddenly need those pelvic floor muscles to work really quickly. Okay, so you want a short burst of activity and you want them to tighten and shorten um, so that no leaking happens okay or you might find that you need to sustain um, that engagement through those pelvic floor muscles so you you could hold everything in for a few seconds okay you know sort of if you're lifting something up heavy for instance you want to be able um, for those pelvic floor muscles to work for, for a little bit longer so what we're going to do today is we're going to work on the endurance of those pelvic floor muscles so this is when you engage the pelvic floor and you want to hold on to that engagement okay so you want them to work for a few seconds okay while you're doing something before that they can relax okay so we're going to use a visualization okay so what I want you to do is I want you to just focus on the um, the back passage okay that is all you're focusing on okay I want you 
to imagine that you are stopping yourself from passing wind. Okay, that's all you're going to do. Yes, it will really focus on the pelvic floor muscles, sort of at the back of the, at the pelvic floor. But if you concentrate on them really well, because we've got more muscle in that part of the pelvic floor, it will help you to engage the front part of the pelvic floor as well. This is a good place to start because I think most women can grasp this. Okay, So if you can just focus on this to start with, yes, it is working the, the, the back of the pelvic floor a little bit more, but it's still encouraging those, um, those muscles at the front to work a little bit as well. It's a, it's a good place to start. Now, one little tip before you start. Make sure you keep everything relaxed, especially your bum. Don't squeeze your bum because those aren't the muscles we're trying to work. Okay, Keep your bum nice and relaxed. That could be quite tricky to start with because you feel like you just want to squeeze everything. Okay, But keep your bum nice and relaxed. So remember, you're focusing on those muscles around the back passage. You're trying to stop yourself from passing wind. We're going to do it with the breathing because I always find it's a little easier. So I want you to take a nice deep breath in. And then as you breathe out, I want you to engage those muscles around the back passage. Remember, you're stopping yourself from passing wind. Draw everything in and upwards. So feel like it's going in and up. And then just relax. Okay, now when you relax, I want you to feel that definite relaxing as though the pelvic floor is relaxing down because you've already lifted it up so i want you to feel that definite relaxing of the pelvic floor now because we're working on endurance i want you to hold it and ideally what we want to be able to do is engage pelvic floor lift bring everything in lift everything up and hold it for a count of 10. okay so shall we have a little go i'm going to do it with a breath again so you're going to take a breath in to prepare, and then as you breathe out, draw everything in, draw everything up. Those muscles around the back passage feel like you're pulling them all the way up as much as you can. Hold on to that, count to ten in your head, keep breathing while you're doing it. And then just relax, and then get that definite feeling of relaxing the pelvic floor. Now don't worry if you can't hold it for a count of 10. When I first started, I couldn't either. I think I was about a three or a four, okay, somewhere there. It's something, it's like any muscle. You've got to keep working it to get it stronger. So the more you do it, the stronger it will get, the longer you will be able to hold that engagement for. Should we do it again? I'll try it one more time, shall we? So you're going to take a breath in to prepare. And then as you breathe out, make sure you don't squeeze your bum. Draw everything together. Pull everything up. So those um, muscles around the back passage feel like you're just drawing them up. Pull them up, pull them up, keep counting to 10, but keep breathing at the same time. And then just relax and feel the pelvic floor relax. Now, you can't feel the pelvic floor relax at the end. It may be that it's already got tired and it's already relaxed without you really realizing it. So if you're trying to get to 10 and you can't feel that relaxation at the end, then do it again but don't hold that engagement for so long. Try it like I did. When I first started, I could only count to a three or a four and relax to feel the pelvic floor relaxing. If I held it for any longer, it had already relaxed. Uh, it had already switched off and got too tired. So don't push yourself to count to 10, okay? Feel what your body is telling you, okay? So if it's only count to three or four, that is fine. You need to start somewhere. So, of course, the question is, how often should you do your pelvic floor workout? Well, every day, every day. Now, if you were like me, I first started doing my pelvic floor exercises regularly after I had my little boy. OK, so what I would suggest to you, if you're just starting out with your pelvic floor exercises or you just haven't done them for ages. OK, what I would suggest is doing your pelvic floor exercises three times a day. Spread them out during the day, okay? And that engaging exercise that we've just done, where you count up to 10, see if you can repeat it eight to 10 times. So in a morning when you get up, repeat it eight to 10 times, okay? Do it halfway through the day and then do it again towards the end of the day. That is where you need to start. And do that for three months initially. 
So if you've got any continence issues, if you feel that little bit of leaking, I would like to think that after three months, providing you're working those muscles correctly, and you can draw in, hold for 10, okay, that those issues that you're having are getting better. You can see an improvement, okay? So once you get to that point and you can feel that improvement and you're not getting perhaps that, that little bit of leaking every now and again, you just you need to keep doing it. Don't don't stop but because it's like any muscle, okay? If you don't work that muscle, it will lose its strength over time. But just drop it down to once a day. So once a day, after you've done your initial three months, once a day, do eight to ten of those engagement exercises, engage pelvic floor just once a day. And then you do that for the rest of your life because if you stop doing it, you will lose the strength. So it only takes a few minutes, especially when you know what you're doing, once a day. That's all you need to do to keep that strength in your pelvic floor. Now, if after three months, you're finding that things just aren't getting any better, okay, then that is the point where you perhaps need to see someone, you need to get someone to just have a little look, check that you are able to engage those muscles correctly. Because sometimes we, we always think that the pelvic floor becomes weak and we need to strengthen it. And for the majority of women, that is the case. But for some women, the pelvic floor can be tight through trauma, so usually childbirth, okay, um, and it sort of tightens up. And then the problem is the pelvic floor just doesn't know how to relax. So if you can't relax, it, you can't do that engagement. You can't draw in and pull everything up because it's already so tight. There's nowhere for it to go. So if you're doing your pelvic floor exercises and you've done them three times a day for three months and you don't feel any improvement, then that is the time where you need to see a physiotherapist who specializes in women's pelvic health to take a look at it for you. It is so easy to fix these simple uh, pelvic floor issues, the continence issues that women have. The problem is, I think we, we think in our heads, well, I'm just getting older, it's bound to happen, it's just something I've got to put up with. But that isn't the case. The pelvic floor is just a muscle. It is like any muscle. If you went to the gym and you wanted to build up your arm muscles, they would get bigger and stronger. The same happens to your pelvic floor. So there is no reason why pelvic floor muscles won't help you. You just need to keep consistent with those exercises and just keep working those muscles. Okay. So I hope you found that useful and I hope you'll go away now and do your pelvic floor muscles workout.